The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey guys, good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, Business Wrap-Up webinar series. I'm your host, Andy Tuttle, with the Tuttle Group at Fairway Mortgage, and with me is the CEO of Real News uh, PR, Jeff Crilly. Jeff, thanks so much for being with us today, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So we actually did a webinar for the top 250 just about an hour ago. That went, that was fantastic. A lot of good questions. So I'm excited to see what you guys have here at the one o'clock hour. You're getting this invite because you're a part of Callan County Association of Realtors. You were at the YPN Recharge event or you registered for it or uh, you are in Metro Tech. So you're in one of those associations or you've been to the event and you are interested in finding out more about Jeff. And so that's why we're doing this follow up uh, webinar series. I uh, we're going to go into a little bit of the market because I think it's relevant with the election. Uh, and then we're going to let Jeff go. And we've got a couple of questions for you. But kind of the overall uh, theme of this today and really the series for this month is to just say thanks to you guys. We appreciate you. We appreciate what you do in the industry and for your clients. And we want to make sure you know that we want to give back to you as well. So that's our goal with this series. So as a reminder, this is a four week series. So today's Jeff and it's about marketing for free and how to become an expert on TV and radio. Um, and it's uh, going to be, you're going to love this. And then next week we're going to have Jimmy Nelson about how to share your, share your story online in the digital space. So it's not just, here's my listing, here's my listing. And then we're going to have Judy Hoberman about how to sell to women better and how to build that business better around that. And then we're going to end with Dayton Schrader, one of the top realtors in the country about building just a successful platform. So the reason we're really talking about business so much is this is the time of year to do that. As you can see, I'm in a hotel in California right now. I take this week off. I do business planning. There's a coaching summit that I go to the last few days and I just try to get into a creative space and do this. And we're hoping that you do the same. And we're here to hopefully get your mind in a good mindset to get ready for the end of the year. You still got to work in your business. But Jeff, would you agree that this is a great time of year to really focus on your business? Absolutely. I mean, sometimes people will say that they're too busy to work on their business. And I'm, I couldn't uh, disagree more. I mean, you always should be working on your business. That's correct. And you got to, one of the best way I've heard this guys is that like, look at wherever you're at right now. If you're in a hotel or you're in your office or you're whatever, ask how long it took to build that building. How many, how long does it take to even just get the plans for a building, right? Sometimes the plans can take a year. Finding the space, working everything out, working with developers, coordinating the actual build could take six to 12 months or on a bigger building longer. All of that time to build the building that you're in, how long have you spent on building your life and building your business? So every year it's so important to take extra time to work on your business so that you working in your business can go smoother, more automatic, okay? And so that's the point of this. Um, and so a couple of just house cleaning notes here. On the right-hand screen, if you've got questions during this, you can either raise your hand um, or you can write your questions into the chat box. There's a little chat box and you can just type your questions in there and we'll read those later in the call. I'm going to do a few minutes on the market. I mean, I own a branch of a mortgage company. It's important that I talk about that for you. And then we're going to let Jeff go for about 20 minutes and then we will follow at the end. We'll have some questions for you guys and we've got some poll questions in here. We just ask for your uh, participation in that so we can kind of find out where everybody's at and more guide this webinar to be more valuable for you. Okay, Jeff, sound good? Sounds perfect. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, go here. Okay, now you see my screen, Jeff? Yep. The, the, okay, cool. So, guys, real quick, this is mortgage-backed security chart. The higher the price, the lower the rates, the lower the price, the higher the rates. The reason I want to show you this is the election is happening today. We've already seen some news there, and I want to make sure you're armed to give your clients some advice, not only in the short term, but just uh, going forth through the end of the year. So a couple things to note, and I'll spend just a minute on this. Take a very careful note to this blue line. Notwithstanding the fact that we've seen rates increase about a half a point since the end of September, uh, we're in a very, very dangerous spot in the market. So if I go back to the last two years, you're going to see the importance of this blue 200-day moving average. So it's typically a trendsetter for, for months to come. So if you notice, when we cross below this, in June of last year, we stayed below it. We had one freakish day above it, but we stayed below it for the most part until October of that year, several months. Then we were above it for a full month. Rates were better. Then we were below the line for three months, and now we've been above it for the entire year of 2016. And why that's important is this. If, we, if you have buyers that are on the fence 
or sellers thinking, oh, I want to wait. No, no, no. Now is the time. This is a volatile market. We could see this. If See how this today, just on the, some of the election news, we've seen it break below the 200-day moving average significantly. If we don't close above this tomorrow, no matter who gets elected, the bond market is showing signs of weakness and volatility regardless because the market has to kind of figure out what's good and what's bad. The stock market actually, just economics report, the economists report that the stock market actually tends to favor a Clinton presidency, but the bond markets don't like either right now. And so that's a challenge for you going into this weekend for the buyer. So what we say is, hey, look, for your buyers that just got a contract, make sure they're talking to their lender right now and are in a position to lock right now. For your buyers that were pre-approved back in September, that rate may be a half a point higher. Their rate, depending on loan size, could be 75 to 150 bucks a month more. So yeah, what that tells me is when you're talking with your buyers, you know what I don't what we don't want for you is to have them get aggressive on a contract and then they get that contract and go, wait a second, my, I'm, I was at the top of my budget anyway. Now it's another 150 bucks. I don't know if I can do this. And then there becomes the waffling and fear and some challenges, right? And so we don't want that to happen to you. So it's a good idea to get them re-pre-approved right before you go make these offers if it's been a while so that they know those numbers going into these deals okay we also want to make sure that they're still approved right because some of those buyers are tight approvals okay so take a look at that and then going in for the end of the year just know really this week will have a lot to do with where the trend goes so if we stay below this line through this week you're going to be looking at eight to three eighths percent higher rates through the through the rest of the month so it's not a great trend so we want to say act now does that make sense cool so Without further ado, uh, speaking of making sense, Jeff makes the most sense to me when I talk to him and uh, listen to him. He's a good friend and a, and a mentor, and I've seen him do so many great things with his business. He's going to share a lot with you today, and what we want to do is just really quickly find out how many of you were actually at the uh, event so we know how to tailor make the conversation. So I'm going to launch a poll. All right, Jeff? We're going to launch a poll real quick, a few poll questions. And so the first one is just, were you at the recharge event? So if you would just let us know, I'm launching the poll. The poll is open. If you take just a few seconds, we'll give about 10 seconds here to kind of see where everybody is at. And then we can uh, manage it from there. So I'm going to give another 10 seconds. Okay, good. We're getting some good participation. Okay. And okay, perfect. So great. All right. So look. Let me share this poll. So it looks like we're actually a little mix. We have got, if you guys see this, we're about 60% are have gone to the event, Jeff, and 40% uh, have not gone to the event. Okay. So let's hide that. And you guys are seeing that, right, Jeff? You seeing those polls? Good. Okay. So here's another couple follow-up questions. I think this will be fun. Uh, here's a good, another poll question. Let us know if you've been on TV before. And America's Most Wanted doesn't count. <laughs> Good Lord. Jeff took it to a really bad place. Uh, um, <laughs> neither do, neither do uh, neither does the reality Dallas uh, Dallas Housewives show. That doesn't count. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't count. Either. That doesn't count. Okay, guys, we have about 60% participation. Let's see if we can get a little bit more here. Um, giving it perfect. Okay, perfect. So this is interesting. All right, so we're similar there. So we've got, let me share this one. We're at about 60% have been on TV and 40% haven't. Okay, Jeff, is this helpful? Perfect. Okay, last last question. Let's see how many of you have been on radio. Last poll question, guys. This will really help us shape this conversation for you. And again, let's get as much as we can. Okay, so give it another few seconds. Get everybody participating. All right. Perfect. Thank you, guys. All right. Great. That's good. All right, let me show that. So actually, more people have not been on radio. So we've got more on TV, less on radio. OK. Good. OK, Jeff. Well, now that you've got that information, uh, let's go ahead and get you right into it. So we know some of these most of these people have been to the event. And so we'll make this a little different than that, but also kind of recover some of those same themes and then just take it away. So. Um one of the things that, that I, I have to stress to people is that they are an expert and they're worthy to be quoted by the media. I think if, if everybody left this call and they checked their voicemail and it was the Dallas Morning News or uh, the Channel 8 uh, ABC here in Dallas and they wanted to do a feature story on you or ask your expertise, you would be 
so thrilled. Some of you would be high-fiving your, your coworkers saying, oh my goodness, I finally got discovered. And my message is the phone works both ways, right? There's no reason why you couldn't contact those newsrooms. So one of the first things that you have to embrace is the idea that you have knowledge that the media needs. If there was a breaking news story today, let's suppose that uh, interest rates spiked or mortgage rates had a sudden spike overnight, you would have different TV stations and radio stations um, going in different directions to find their experts. Some of them would even call college campuses and talk to some professor. How many of you have been watching the local news and you saw somebody less qualified than yourselves uh, saying something that you should say? What I tell people is that if you ever see anybody on the news or hear them on the radio or read them in the paper saying something that you could say, you should get mad and you should say, that person stole my quote, but it won't happen the next time. What does that mean to you? It means that you have to be um, proactive. And when you hear a story or you see a trend or you, you have something that you want to contribute to the narrative, you have to have the confidence to pick up the phone and call the reporter who's most likely to tell your story. So one of the things that I tell people is that I love classic rock, and in the car I would love to listen to classic rock. I don't. I listen to news radio because I want to hear storylines that are developing that I could benefit from. If you're in the car and you're listening to the radio and they're telling you some kind of story about home sales uh, going up, down, sideways, uh, uh, more people refinancing. I mean, if you hear a story on the radio that, that you talk about, it means that a window of opportunity has just opened. Typically, they're not reading a story that didn't come from someplace, that didn't have um, a study attached to it or a government figure attached to it. When you're hearing a story on the radio, it means that a storyline has just developed for you, and if you wait too long, they're going to end up finding another expert. So uh, let's take, for instance, we'll use Andy as an example. If overnight, for some uh, reason, uh, based on the election results or, or whatever, we see a, some kind of change in, in mortgage rates, and tomorrow at this time, one of the big stories is, oh my goodness, mortgage rates just spiked to a quarter of a percent. I mean, would that be a, a decent spike, Andy? Today, absolutely, yes. Okay, so um, that's a news story, and somebody's going to get it. So, somebody's going to be quoted on the news about what just happened overnight. So it might as well be Andy. So what Andy does is says, oh, my goodness, um, I, Crilly, Crilly was right. Here it is. It's, it's now Wednesday, and that story that he predicted has come true. Let me see if he's right. I wonder if I could get myself on the news. So Andy says to himself, you know what? I got a face for TV. I could be on TV. Let me let me do let me do TV news. Uh, what comes to mind is like the uh, Channel Eight Four O'clock News has interviews. They have an interview set, and they will bring people on the set, and they'll sit down for four or five minutes and talk to them. So Andy says, "Man, I want to be on Channel Eight's Four O'clock News as an expert." He could call the main number to Channel Eight, say tell whoever answers the phone, I need the newsroom. Next thing you know, he's got the newsroom. Uh, Channel 8 News, Andy says, this is Andy Tuttle. I need to speak to your 4 p.m. producer. If you haven't called at 3.30 in the afternoon, <laughs> if, you, if you've called when this person actually has time to talk to you, you're going to be transferred to the 4 o'clock producer. And what you're going to say, Andy, I always say start with a compliment. Um, everybody's favorite subject is themselves, and producers are mostly behind the scenes. They don't get credit for the newscast. It's always the anchor did the great job, but the producer is the person who, who really made that newscast happen. So you compliment the producer on her favorite subject, his favorite subject, her, him. You say, hey, Belinda, thank you for taking my call. I know how busy you are. I hope I'm, I'm not calling at a bad time. No, this is a good time, Andy. Okay, so Belinda, first of all, let me just tell you, I love what you've done with the 4 o'clock news. Her ears perk up. Her boss didn't tell her this. Her husband didn't tell her this. She <laughs> says, really? Tell me more. Yes, it's so it's uh, your, the, the flow of the show, it's just, it's just it's so smooth. It's just uh, you do a great job with the 4 o'clock news. I don't know how long you guys have been, you've been producing. Oh, I've only been here about six months. Really? Where would you come from? St. Louis. Wow, big jump. 
Well, you, so, so you survive the, the Texas summer. Um, you're about to hit the Texas winters, which aren't too bad compared to St. Louis. You see what I'm doing here? I'm schmoozing. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what people in, the, in your industry do all the time, and news media people are no different. So she says, well, Andy, how can I help you? Say, Belinda, I don't know if you've been watching uh, the, the numbers that came out overnight, but interest rates spiked a quarter of a percent. Now, that may not sound like a big deal in your world, but in my world, that's a huge deal. Typically, it won't move more than a quarter percent um, in, in a month. I mean, I'm correcting that up. Correct. No, okay. Um, and, it, and it did it overnight. And so everybody in my industry is saying, okay, what the heck just happened? And what is this going to mean to home sales? Are we going to see uh, people wanting to close? Is it going to frighten people off? So at this point, I, my crystal ball is a little uh, cloudy. I don't know exactly what, whether it's going to mean people are, are going to put off uh, that home buying decision or let's lock in before they get go any higher. But whichever way they go, it's a wake-up call for your audience. I don't know if you need a guest for the 4 o'clock news today or tomorrow, but I'd love to come in and, and educate your viewers on what this uh, spike in mortgage rates means to the person who is considering buying a home. What That little pitch that I just did for you, Andy, is, is really kind of perfect. You said, um, Belinda, I'm a fan. You do a great job. I do watch your newscast. Here's a story. This is, this is why your viewers should care and I'm the person to, to do it. If she says, you know, Andy, that sounds like a good story. I'm, I'm filled today, um, but uh, let, let me run that by my bosses. Uh, can you call me tomorrow morning? I mean, a, a, a typical, like, if they're going to blow you off, they'll say, let me run it by the bosses. Right. So it's, it's like the, the car person saying, let me talk to my manager. Mm -hmm. um, but if she's inviting you to call back tomorrow, she, it's not a total blow off. She's right. saying, I want, I want to communicate with you again. And you say, absolutely. So what time should I call you tomorrow? Call me about 9.30 and I should know something. So you call her back 9.30 the next morning and you get yourself on the news. That's, it's not an exaggeration. Everything that I, I said is true. And that's what my PR firm does every single day is we are calling newsrooms, inviting our clients on the news. Um, Andy gets on the news and does a good job on Channel 8, suddenly he's in their Rolodex. And the next time something happens with, with mortgage rates, he gets a call. And it begins, hey, Andy, you were on our 4 o'clock newscast of three months ago. They got me doing a story on mortgage rates today. Could we come out and do an interview with you? And I've, I've had uh, clients that have been kind of the go-to person in their field for years because they did a good job the first time. And and a lot of this is just, you know, saying I'm the next I'm the expert and they need me. So one of the things I feel like didn't get answered at the event and there were some questions followed up on were uh, on that note, let's say you don't have that story or you don't you're like quarter percent, okay, well, for the realtors that are on the call, well what's my story? Like what's relevant? Like how do you go find what's a good practice for that? to go find those stories to make those calls. So um, let's let's go out to Google. If you can pull up Google sure. for me, Andy. Sure. Um, so tell me if you just see my screen. Yeah. Great. I see, go ahead and just put in home sales and then click on Google News. Okay. Just home sales Dallas or home sales? It could be it could be a national you go ahead and go go national. Um, so so you've got it up so click on news. There you go. And all this is doing is that you've now told Google we are only searching the most relevant headlines. So there's one out of San Diego that says the luxury market is cooling. Okay, let's take that for a second. So you as a realtor on this call say, you know, um, what am I seeing in my luxury market? How long is it taking a million dollar home to sell uh, today versus six months ago or a year ago? And the wonderful thing about statistics is you can tell any story you want to tell. So, Andy, I'm just, uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, how long does it take a million-dollar home to sell? How long does it sit on the market? Well, obviously, I'm not a realtor, but what I'm hearing from my realtors is those, depending on the area, I mean, if a normal home has gone up from, you know, 30 to 60 days, those have probably gone three to six months. I wish I could actually throw up a poll question right now. We don't have time, but... Um, 
uh, three to six months at least. Any realtors, if you could chime in on the chat for how long those million dollar listings are taking, that would also be appreciated. But they have doubled. Some of them are taking six to 12 months, I know. Okay, so the beautiful thing about this is that you could you could search and you could say, okay, how long did a million dollar homes stay in the market a year ago? How long did they stay in the market two years ago? Is there a case to be made that this story that we're seeing out of San Diego could also be told here in Dallas? Um, if if the numbers uh, could back up that claim that the luxury market across the country is slowing, then you might have a storyline there. And, and, we're then having, you're, and then, by the way, six to 12 months is right, so go ahead. Okay. So um, I, I think as a backdrop to all of this, the narrative of the election and Janet Yellen and what's going to happen to interest rates, all of that stuff is good um, noise in the background of any pitch that you're going to do for the next few months right. um, and, as a realtor because – uh, the, the the definition of news is what's the what's news since the last time we told you this story and the the story that has been told forever in Dallas Fort Worth is man we've got one of the hottest hottest housing markets in the country that's not changing you know even if we go into a uh, a pullback uh, it'll still be a hot home market but comparatively speaking. Are we cooling off from where we were a year ago or two years ago? And are the people in that one million and above range uh, suddenly finding themselves um, sitting uh, in a home that used to take uh, less time? That storyline gives you something to go to the media with. You can't just call up a reporter and say, "Hey, I'm a realtor. Do a story on me." They're like, "Take a you know, take a number." Right. <laughs> There's a lot of realtors here, so. Why should I do a story on you? But if you come to them with a, uh, what I say is that the, the media likes a cake that is baked, iced, sliced, and served to them. So how would you bake this cake and ice it? But you're the expert in the story, but you're not what the, what gives the story life. What gives the story life is the the human face, the the, the home seller. So let's suppose you find a home seller that is sitting in a million dollar home and it's been on the market for a while and you call them up and you say, hey look, I'm thinking about going out to the media about your million dollar home. I think I can get you on channel eight, which is free advertising because they'll come out and get, get shots of your beautiful home. But I'd like to embrace the angle that um, the luxury market is starting to cool, and homeowners like you are having to wait longer to get their uh, get their price, or even reduce their price a little bit. That there's a big difference between uh, 1.1 million and 990,000. The home buyer or home seller says, "Yeah, that, I'm I'm okay being on Channel Eight, especially if it's all that free advertising. Go for it." Now you, the realtor, are able to go to the media with a, a cake that is iced and sliced. So here's how it would, it would go. I would go with a general assignment reporter. A general assignment reporter on television is the person who one day they're doing a crime, the next day they're doing corny dogs at the state fair, the next day they're doing a school story. They're kind of an everyman reporter. I love those those reporters because they're always looking for their next meal and we're happy to feed it to them. So you find one that you like on Channel 8. Um, an everyday reporter uh, would be like a um, David Schechter is an everyday reporter for, for Channel 8. You could call up the main number to the newsroom and ask for David Schechter. If you get his voicemail, uh, you're going to leave a call, uh, a message that deserves a callback. What does that mean? It, it means you're giving them a compliment, but you're not giving them everything they need to either reject you or approve you. So you say, hey, this is uh, Joe Blow. Um, uh, David, I've been watching you for years. You do a great job on Channel 8. Loved the story you did last week on blah, blah, blah. Hey, I've got one for you. I haven't called Channel 4. I haven't called, called the newspaper. I've got one for you. It absolutely has your name on it. And I've got a couple who can put a face on the story for you. Call me back at 214 blah 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 blah. Okay, you just 
in that little voicemail, you you gave him a lot. You said, I know who you are. I know what you do. I've got one for you. It's newsworthy enough that I could give it to somebody else if I wanted to. And I've got a couple that puts a face on it. But you haven't told him what it is yet, right? No. And that every reporter on the planet has to know what's behind door number two. So David calls you you back and you begin with his favorite subject which is him. David, thanks so much for calling me back. I know how busy you are. They got you running all over Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, you're, you're probably doing the election today, but I've got one for you when life slows down for you. I don't know if you if you know this. I'm a realtor here in Dallas-Fort Worth and I, uh, I, I was just looking at some numbers in the luxury market. Dallas obviously a very hot market, but I noticed that a year ago Homes in the million dollar and above range were selling in about 70 days, and now it's it's up over 90. In some cases, 120 days. In fact, I'm I'm working with some sellers right now. Uh, they're a little bit uh, anxious because they they thought they were going to be out of their home a while ago, and we're talking about reducing the uh, the list price from a million one to maybe nine hundred ninety thousand dollars. Anyway, they'll talk on camera. They've got a beautiful home in Frisco. They uh, would invite you into the home. They can they can talk about uh, the troubles they're having selling their home. Uh, David says yes. You're on the news. David says, well, tell me more. Often what happens, and I call this, let's make a deal. You're coming up with a story. A reporter is asking you questions about that story. So what? Uh, tell me more about this couple. Are they? Does he have another job, or why do they need to move? Oh, well, they're just downsizing. You know, they're, they, they're, they're kind of retired. They got too much home. Uh, they bought the home, um, you know, 10 years ago. They don't need that much house anymore. So it's not like going to make it or break it, but they... They are anxious to move on with their life. Okay, good. Now I have a feeling for what this couple I'm going to meet looks like. Um, and obviously you bundled yourself with the couple because you're their realtor. Right. They, can't, they can't get the couple without you, so you're in the story. Then David says, I love this story. This is, sounds good. Let's, listen, they got me doing kind of election stuff, cleanup stuff, um, but Friday looks good. Maybe Monday looks good. Can you check with your sellers to see if they would be open to doing a story with me on, on Friday or Monday, probably late morning. That's that's really how the pitch is done. I mean, you're, you're identifying a reporter who's likely to tell this, you're giving them a storyline, you're giving them poster children, you're, you are the expert. This cake is, is iced and sliced. So let me, let me dig in, then I need some quick, because it's 1.30 now, so we got to open this up to a call. So that's a good story there, but I've Got some questions off of that, so let's get some of the, the value from that story as far as some takeaways. So one, and the first thing, regardless of if it's a voicemail or a call, the key is, just like from the event, I'm a fan of you, right? You tell them it's a story, you wrap it up with a bow or bake and slice the cake like you say, right? You do the answers and the backdrop. You mentioned that earlier. So you're saying something that's helpful for the realtors on the call is use not just the housing news, but the rest of the news that is in the ether of the conversation right now, the election, the Fed funds, the hike rate, Janet Yellen, these type of hot topics that are um, surrounding your specific industry create a more relevant and powerful backdrop to you bringing it into, hey, luxury market. Is that what you're trying to say? Is that a absolute? Okay. So that's a, another takeaway. So then what here's here's another question that I have for you then on that. When you talk about getting these, and I'm going to open it up to questions for you guys. So just one question for you, and then if you guys start writing your uh, questions, okay, I'm seeing some. Write your questions in the chat for Jeff, and we'll answer those over the next five minutes, and we'll be off the call in about 10. So um, my question for you is, as a realtor, you know, you're being the soundbite. You're the local expert. You're getting quoted. How do I maximize that? and make sure that I'm leveraging that to add value to my business that ends in more buyers or sellers coming to me? So I think, uh, great question. I, I, I'm a big uh, believer in recycling the publicity, repurposing the publicity. So it goes out through your social media feed. Some of you have e-newsletters that you send out and you would absolutely want to feature that piece in your e-newsletter. Um, don't make it seem too braggadocious. You're just basically saying, hey, I was interviewed on Channel 8 recently about a story that may interest you. This is part of a larger trend. Here's the story. Um, so you're guiding your, your fans to more information. But, but really, 
people who never saw it live on Channel 8 are now seeing it through your newsletter. Uh, obviously, stick it on your website. I, uh, with with my firm, we we encourage clients to have tasteful, tastefully use media logos on their homepage as seen on. It's great credibility, and if you if you display it right, it it it, it looks tasteful. Um, and then finally, uh, one strategy that I've seen employed. Uh, wisely is your outbound signature. Think about your outbound signature for a second. Andy, you probably send out 50 emails a day. What if what if the emails in, in your outbound signature said, um, check out Andy's uh, on the news or something like that? Or you, there's probably a better way to say it, but um, Andy Tuttle in the news. Right. And there's a button there. Passively, you're sending out 50, um, you know, emails a day where anybody has an opportunity to click and then s suddenly they're on your media page and they're saying, wow, I didn't realize Andy was such a big deal. I, I knew he had a radio show, but I didn't realize that he was on Channel A. I didn't realize he was quoted in the Dallas Morning News. It, it makes, uh, it's that third party validation um, makes you bigger, more important than you really are. No, it's so true. And it called the merit badges of marketing. I mean, that's what you just because, you know, we both host radio shows, too. And one of the value added pieces there is just, you know, as heard on 660A and the answer, when you have any kind of content that is perceived as unique and at a high level, it automatically gives you credibility there. And when you can push that out to your database, it just makes them people like want to work with the best. They like that. It's an ego thing, too. And they like to refer that it just it plays to that basic part of us that wants to be with that guy. You know what I'm saying? And so it's such a huge component to give you an edge against the rest of the competition. <clears throat> Absolutely. Agreed. Okay. So let's get to a few questions here for time's sake. So we've got a few um, questions coming in. You can still add them. We've got a, a time for um, a few questions, but one of them is, so how, what is it, what are best practices for building a library? And maybe you answered this earlier, but building a library of good stories to tell to the media. So uh, I'm a big believer in recycling, and story storylines uh, come around over and over and over again. Um, by searching the the web for like home sales, like we we did, we yeah. found some current stories that are in the news. But I I dare say that you could go back ten years and see stories that were done ten years ago in the news that you could kind of dust off and bring back again. Um, you know, I, I there, there there's only five stories under the sun. They say boy meets girl, uh, the Rocky story. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> David versus Goliath. There's only five, and they just change the names. Yep. And so, um, uh, with with the real estate industry, same thing. You know, are people upsizing? Are they downsizing? Are they um, are millennials buying homes? I mean, you guys have seen some of these stories. You, you look at a story that you saw on the news like six months ago and said, hey, they did a story six months ago that millennials aren't buying homes. Let me just double check some numbers uh, and, and see if those numbers are still true. Yep. And then you see some evidence that millennials are now jumping into the housing market and now this becomes a new storyline for you. That's great. That's great. So another question. Um, how do I get better at sound bites, at creating I guess, a, you know, how about talking on the news talk, and not just being so long winded, but being powerful and impactful when I'm talking to a reporter or going to be interviewed on TV or radio? That's a great question. So uh, the, I always say that the, a, a brilliant soundbite is not the steak. It's the seasoning on the steak or the sizzle, if you will. The, the steak is the who, what, where, when, why. Um, you know, uh, home sales are up, down, sideways. Uh, that's the steak. The seasoning is what you bring to the soundbite. So in the, in the last call, we, we were uh, talking about if interest rates go up, mortgage rates go up, and you start to see some panic buying because people you want to lock in before the, the rates go up any higher. Right. You could say people are panic buying, but that's kind of a, a milk toast, boring way to say it. Uh, Andy could say, boy, people are jumping off the fence so fast that they're getting splinters on their backside. <laughs> That's clever. It's got it's pithy. Right. And what happens is when you're on the phone with a journalist, they're listening for sound bites and they're saying, okay, I could probably find another mortgage guy or I could fi probably find another realtor, but I don't know I'm going to find somebody who's going to say that. 
and I need that. So dress it up, make it colorful, right? Paint a picture with it, not just give the facts, but maybe even risk it sounds like being a little edgy on that, right? I mean, you know, because that's it's, it doesn't seem edgy, but it's kind of, it's funny and maybe a little risky to say for some. Well, they, 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 in the TV news world, they always called it the seven second soundbite, and there's nothing necessarily magical about seven seconds, but a typical TV news soundbite is, you know, seven to maybe 15 seconds on the long side. Yeah. Well, in those 15 seconds, you're not, uh, don't waste time with the, with numbers. That's yeah. boring. It's all, it's all, it's all, uh, you know, the flavor that you can bring to the story that you're trying to, to tell. I love that. So, okay, so we've got, so we've got time for one more question. I think I'll ask this one because right now we've got, hey, here's what you say when you talk to the, uh, we were able to record this, so if you missed it, we'll get it to you. Uh, but what you say to the reporter on the phone, how you leave a voicemail, difference between TV and radio, and then how to become better at the topic. But here's one last question. I think this is a good one, uh, is uh, how do I, how do I get to the reporter? So maybe could you maybe share? I think you shared a little bit of this at the event, but remind us of the tactic if if there is one to to make to get the information for the reporter. Can you walk us through that real quick? And that'll be the last one today. Absolutely. So I'm a big fan of the of the telephone, and I think too many people these days are afraid of rejection, so they're they're sending emails instead of picking up the phone and making old fashioned phone calls. That actually benefits you because it means the reporters aren't rejecting 30 people a day. They may not get, but maybe even one pitch from somebody uh, pitching them a story. That means they're not burnt out. They're not they're not just you know. Uh, harassed all the time. Right. So, like realtors yeah, are you, you know, you know it's <laughs> all the time. So, um, you, you can call up the newsroom. Like my old newsroom, Clarice Tinsley is the anchor of Channel 4, the main anchor, and she gets maybe, when I left the newsroom, she was getting about 20 phone calls a day, and she made it a point to return everybody's phone call. And that's Clarice Tinsley, and she's very busy lady. Mm -hmm. If you can get Clarice Tinsley to return your phone call, you can get you know Joe Blow reporter on the street to return your phone. Well, call. How do you get their number? How do you find them? Would be the question. So if, you go to if you thing or yeah, if you go to Google and you put in um, two one four, but you want to once you pull it up. So yep. if we wanted to find the number to the Channel Eight newsroom right now, put in W F A A two one four. I think it. that. that yeah, that, that might bring it. Go ahead. Let's see what happens. Okay, so here you go. I don't think that's um, it. No, that's not it. So uh, that, that number right there, the second one, is probably the main number. Yeah, the main number. So let's, let's and, and that would get you a switchboard. But let's go back up to uh, WFAA 214 and just put in the word newsroom and see if that helps. Um, well, we when well, we got the same main number, but then we got a yeah, we got the same number here. Keep going. Uh, here's some. Um, that could be it. Click on that one. The 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 inspection file. Click on that one for a second. Main studio address and phone number. Well, that's six. Yeah. Well, and see, look at that. You're getting um, the you're getting vice it. president number. So now we know that the prefix. So the prefix is two one four nine seven seven. So if you went back into uh, back into Google and put in uh, WFAA newsroom two one four nine seven seven, now now we've got. We're going to get the number now. Oh, look at this. 8222. It's different. Yep. Boom. There it is. So it's, that's it. There you go. So that, that took like 60 seconds. That does not take long. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> so if you can have seconds of work, you can get the, the number for the newsroom. That's great. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. So guys, so first of all, thank you for your questions. What I like about this is covering, hey, here's how you get the number. It's easy. So you could use this same methodology for Dallas Morning News, obviously, for the Fort Worth, Star Telegram. I mean, I guess print, radio, TV, whatever. You could use these this same these same concepts, right, for any of these platforms. Right? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. And then we know what to say voicemail, what to say on the call. We know how to build a library of stories, 
I mean, there's there's a lot of good stuff there if you're getting that. You've got basically a package deal here in 30 minutes of how to target, how to prospect, what to say, how to follow up, and how to build some stories that, hey, guess what? If one doesn't hit, we'll try this one next time with this, right? Test the stories out. Have a few. When I was in, uh, I used to, with being an actor, I was in a little theater and film, and you were always taught to have at least five monologues in your back pocket for different types of dramedy, a drama, comedy, different types of characters, right? Just so that you could pull it up. It's the same thing here, right? Build a story, a library of different yeah. topics with the backdrop, especially over these next couple of months of the election and so much relevant stuff going on around housing. You could really get in there with a few people. And guys, it only takes one or two news stories to repurpose now with digital space for social, email to your database, put on your website, guys. This is not a lot of work that could get you a ridiculous amount of exposure and totally separate yourself here going into the next year to really have a rolling start and have your best year yet. That's fantastic stuff, Jeff. Thank you so much. Oh, it's, it was a pleasure. Thanks, Andy. Good. So real quick, I'm wrapping up here with you, Jeff. Any final words that I may uh, have missed that you'd like to give the audience here before we uh, before we uh, log out here. I would say, like Nike says, just do it. I mean, lots of people um, can uh, read a diet book and then never never start doing it. Um, they get a gym membership, they do it for a minute, and then all of a sudden they never go to the gym anymore. Part of this is, is uh, putting into action the ideas that you heard. Every, everything that I described for you is what my PR firm does every single day. It can be done. You can do it yourself. Uh, and I think you will feel so empowered when you make this call and Channel 8's on their way out to, to interview you. You'll say, gosh, it worked just like you said. Yeah, that's great. Guys, give it a chance. If you want to find out more, you know, Jeff Curley, obviously, he represents a lot of the top realtors in town. If you want to talk to him about representation and what he can do for you and becoming a client, go to realnewspr.com or call the number on your screen right now. That is a great time to get with Jeff, get with his team, and find out what they can do for you because they do web design, not just PR, but all videography. They do so much right now for a full um, marketing platform. Is that, am I, am I saying right? really to help you not only get the information out there, but then what to do after it. So great, great opportunity uh, to partner with him and talk to him more about that. As far as me, uh, guys, you know, we want to give you value. That's what we're trying to do here. At the end of the day, we want I want to partner with you as your lender or an LO on my team to help you grow your business, right? And our commitment to you is to help you double your income and double your time off with two years of working with us. And that's what we love to do. That's what we do now. And one of the ways we do that is teach you on sales tactics, bring great people to you like Jeff Crilly and, and Jimmy Nelson, the other speakers that are coming up. And then also uh, we do lunch and learn. So in December, on December 7th at lunch, uh, we are doing a business, my annual business planning class. It's a couple of hours and we just go deep on a few key components of business planning to help you get in the right mindset and get the wheels turning correctly so that when you launch into uh, 2017, you're just taking action. You're not having to try to create and work on strategy. Most things in life are tactical. So this is a way to really cast the vision for yourself and make sure that you're on course and you've got the right picture and the right ladder on the right roof. And then 2017, all you're doing is climb. Okay. And you know, when you get to the top, it's going to be the right roof. Like Stephen Covey says. Okay. So we help. If you want to find out more about that, go to the telegroup.com or call the main number and we'll get you more information on that. Other than that, thank you guys so much for being on the call. We'll get you some um, emails out and remember to sign up for the rest of the webinar series. You can go to the telegroup.com there too. We've got different speakers over the next several weeks and we're all doing it for you to hopefully give back and help you have a wonderful a wonderful month. Remember to go vote today. It's a great right we have in this country. Go vote today. It means a lot. Thank you so much for joining the call and uh, have a great week.